Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Workshop. You probably remember this air compressor. I did three videos, I think, on installing the air compressor and building the shed around it. Uh, all that went well, and the compressor has been serving me fine up until yesterday. Guess what? It's not working. And I'm pretty confident it's the pressure switch. Uh, I'm going to do some troubleshooting. I'm going to have to fix this. There is a warranty on it from Lowe's, but I'm concerned that they're going to replace it with the same kind of pressure switch. And they also told me that it could be up to 14 days before they fix it. I'm just not going to wait that long. So I'm going to probably have to upgrade this switch and, you know, deal with a, a, a claim, a reimbursement claim of some sort. But let me show you what's going on right now. So if you follow the other videos, you know I put this in, I think, in November. I built this enclosure around it, and, you know, it's it's done its job. It, it, it's working fine. Um, but yesterday or the day before, I don't remember which right now, uh, I heard the compressor go kind of, uh, like it started the run, and then it shut off. This switch normally would control the functions there. Uh, cover comes off and this is what you're turning with that little red knob now what failed i don't know yet i'm actually going to take this switch off i've already drained all the pressure out of the tank so that i can take it apart um, you know it's wired 220 and the feed is here you know everything's correctly wired and operates the only question i'm going to have is this valve or uh, this tubing right here uh, i believe that is you know the uh, an overpressure fitting I think is what that's for. I can't tell where exactly. It looks like it connects to this tube. And I'm hoping, yep, yeah, I'm hoping that I can find a way to make this work because this is a plastic tube or nylon or whatever, Teflon, and it's got a slip fitting right here. So basically you pull this collar back and this should come out of it. Uh, I'm trying to do it with one hand, but anyway, you can see it's wiggling. It should come out. But how I'm going to remedy this, I don't know because I don't think I want to go back with this switch. What I will do is I'm going to take this off and try to take it apart and see what's failed and uh, go from there. Now, of course, the first thing you do, unplug it. Make sure you don't have any power. Okay, the power is unplugged, so I'm going to take loose the two wires that are connected. These are my feeds and also just remove them. I could just I could do it a couple ways. I could either loosen up the nut or I could just loosen up the wiring itself from the retainer. Either way will work. And I also have a ground wire that has to be disconnected and that's going to require, I don't know if I can get in there with a pair of pliers or not, uh, it's probably easier with this nut off actually, in my case anyway, get a little bit more access to it and of course it's trying to rain today or it is it's been raining so that's no fun. Okay. So, wiring out of the way. Now, the other thing I have to disconnect is the wiring for the motor. So that also has two Phillips head screws in there. And another ground wire, which in this case is just held in with another, it looks like a, I don't know if it's a quarter inch, uh, bolt or screw either way I'm um, well let me see if I can do that I can take this there's a screw head on this end and really this is just a big clamp that's holding this together it's holding the wiring to uh, the uh, pressure switch just so you know it is a quarter inch and that wire has a, a loop on the end of it so you have to take this bolt all the way out this wiring will come out of the motor, or come out of the uh, pressure switch. 
my bigger concern is how this piece of Teflon is, is in this. I thought this collar would pull back and release it, but it doesn't seem to want to do that. So what I'm going to try to do, reposition the switch itself, try to get it broken loose, and see if that doesn't help give me some room to get this off. Okay, I ended up, I was able to push in on that collar and get it to come loose. I'm gonna take this whole thing off. Um, but this will pivot. And like I said, I, I just pushed in enough on that and it released. So I'm gonna take this inside the shop. I don't know that it's any good to do that because I was hoping I would have some sort of access to be able to see what's going on with this thing, but this is all riveted together, so it's probably a dead end. Hmm. Okay. Well, again, my bigger concern is how I'm going to connect this piece of Teflon to another switch, because I may go with a different brand. Okay, I'm not recommending you do this. Be warned. I've done a direct wiring to the motor and I'm going to flip the breaker just to make sure that the motor is working. Well, that verifies that. I did some investigating and I tried to find something that would be compatible or easily used and I drove by Tractor Supply, I drove to Lowe's, I checked at Harbor Freight, you know, and I found, basically, this says Porter Cable on it. And this was at Tractor Supply. This was $47, and it's rated to 155 PSI maximum, which is fine. I don't, I don't even know if this one actually was rated or would uh, shut off at 175. It says 147, or 145 to 175 is what this one says. I don't need 175 PSI, so this one is at 155. And again, this was sold at Tractor Supply, $47 and change, $51 with tax, and it's it's the exact same thing. I mean, it's the same, the whole deal. So what I'll have to do, obviously get it out of the package, uh, it's going to make it easier because it has that same quick connect at the bottom. So I'll have to get it, you know, use that tubing. Uh, I'll have to plug off, it gives you plugs inside the package for the lines you don't need, which in this case there's only one which you could add a port if you wanted to have a hose uh, which I thought about doing this if I had a, had a hose outside here I could have one inside of my little uh, booth and if I needed air outside I could just uncoil that and use it so I still may come back and do something later with that so basically I'm going to transfer all this stuff over and uh, get this installed Now why it has an extra one of these, don't know. But yeah, that's oh. Oh, that's interesting. There's a difference right there. This one has the big hole in it that the main wire went in. This one is designed, looks like they want you to go up through. So there's a heavier cleat if you look at the size of those. That's the smaller, and of course that's the bigger, so uh, that should be okay. The other thing it looks like, this one actually has little tabs on it where you could clip wires on, I guess. I don't plan to do that. Let me see if I can move those. Oh, I see now. Okay, that makes sense. So it actually gives you two of these because that is for a smaller diameter feed line and larger and this does it for has two so your option on that um, let me see what these how this works okay so you can remove these and just feed the wire into the slots 
which is what I will do because I don't have it set up the other way. But it's nice that they give you that option anyway. All right, so I can set those aside. Plenty of room inside of there to get the wires on. Now I need to just transfer some stuff. So this is your pressure relief. Might want to put some Teflon tape around that to put it back in. I have the fitting on the bottom here. Should be standard quarter inch. If I can get that loose. Okay, that's going to take a little more effort. Now it looks like this had some sort of, you know, I don't know what they call it, thread dope or something on there. Um, I'm just going to go back with Teflon tape because it's what I have. And maybe the two together will do the job. Alright, last thing is to transfer pressure gauge. I'm going to get that out without too much trouble. Yeah. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I sh it would be easier if this was mounted on the compressor, you know, because then it's going to resist the rotation. So I'm going to put this in the vise and just get that loose. That's pretty much how it was positioned before. Uh, this is a 9 16 um, I use the 9 16 on this one as well. This one, even though it's a 9 16 there's a little bit of play in it, but it seemed to do the job. So now what I need to do is decide if I want to use this cleat or that cleat. So I'll have to go out and get it in a compressor and go from there. It appears that the smaller cleat is going to work fine for this. So I'm going to put this back on here. I'm not going to push on the pressure gauge. I want to make sure it's not being twisted around or anything. Okay, I'm going to let that go right there. Um, I don't think I can make another full round. Now, this little plastic line that I talked about, that should just snap right in, and it does. So, at this point, I need to get this wiring up inside the cleat. Other wiring, I'll have to remove the, um, remove the collar that I had set up. Now on this plate, there are two Phillips head screws. Those are your grounds. So that green will come down to that ground and this one will go to the opposite ground. But for now, I want to get this anchored in place. Okay. The thing is that screw, because this has a loop on the end of it, I'm gonna have to take the screw all the way out Use my handy dandy pliers. And I'll do the same for this other one, but I don't have a loop on it, so I'll just have to get it underneath. There's a little square post on there. I kind of like the other version better because you could you could get into it a little easier as far as this goes. 
but if it works, it works. Now these, I don't know that it's really going to matter. It says motor, motor, line, line. So I know that obviously you have to have both of the motor ones on, this, on the motor connection. I'll slip those in. Now, I need the cover. So, this pressure should already be set, but uh, I'm not going to mess with it. I'm going to monitor this and let it get up to what should be 155 and cut off. That would be great. If not, then this has to be adjusted. And it shows a plus and a minus, and I'm sure there's some more instructions that go with that. But for now, I just want to get this on and make sure it runs. All right, let's see what happens. Fingers crossed, let's see. Can you guess what I forgot to install? Can you guess? That. <laughs> Note to self, make sure all the fittings are in <laughs> before you start. Not a big deal. Uh, just takes a, an Allen wrench to turn that in. I'm in a hurry. I'm trying to get, I mean, I'm in a hurry. I'm, I need to have my air compressor, so. Okay, let's try that again. You ready? Much better. Cool. So it really shut off on that gauge at 157. I'm happy with that. Well, you hate to have to do stuff like this, but I have to have my air compressor. I need this thing on a daily basis. I can't wait for some maintenance to come out and fix the thing or whatever. So I'm going to try to do a reimbursement with Lowe's and see if I can get, you know, at least paid back for the parts. And we'll see how that goes. But uh, if I get some information on that, I'll try to share that later on, of course, uh, as an update on this video. But I uh, hope, hope you found some information that was helpful. You know, again, we don't want to have to do these things, but it's not that complicated if you have just some simple hand tools and you can find the part. So that'll be it for this video. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. I may have skipped a, a very minor... A very minor thing.